breakfast, and that's a good thing. And uh, something to keep in mind, whether you're in Thailand or Cambodia, and that's anytime you get the opportunity to break a larger bill. Now, in Cambodia, we're using U.S. dollars, so not a restaurant uh, probably is never going to be able to break a hundred dollar bill. They might be able to break a fifty, uh, but if you have the opportunity to break a twenty into smaller uh, denominations, go for it. Always do that in a place you know that they've got business and they've got some cash. Now, uh, in Thailand, that would apply to thousand baht bills, which at this point in time equate with an exchange rate of uh, about thirty-one U.S. dollars. Um, sorry, I can't convert other other currencies, but. Um, you want to be able to, because all these small businesses don't have change. And uh, anytime you're, you're doing almost anything, you're going to need small money. Um, that taxis, uh, tuk-tuk drivers, motorbike drivers, buying fuel for your motorbike. Now, actually, if you buy fuel from one of those little vendors like you saw with the bottle, you're going to need really small money. If you're in Cambodia, that means the reals. Um, you probably they would get confused with the dollar. <laughs> Um, but uh, if you go to a real gas station, you'd be able to break, uh, break a larger bill. So that would work okay in a larger gas station. But always try and keep as much small money as you can. Now in Thailand, this whole thing about tipping people, like uh, people watching your motorbikes and stuff, doesn't happen. So I find myself in, in Cambodia wanting to tip out people with the small, the small money, the reals. Uh, that's sort of like my tip money for the locals. Now, in Latin countries, like when I was in Costa Rica and places like that, uh, it's the same thing. You know, you need to protect your stuff, and there were guards everywhere um, that were was they were protecting your uh, your vehicles and stuff when you parked them, and you always tip them out. So that was a common practice, but um, that's not the way it is in Thailand. Uh, you park your bike. And uh, you don't worry too much about it. I don't really. I've had my, my motorcycle helmet in Thailand stolen once or twice. Um, but uh, here, I mean, you really need to put the extra lock. You always, if you rent a bike, they'll give you an extra lock. In Thailand, I use it sometimes, depending on where I'm parking. Here, you need to use it all the time. And uh, there's a little catch under the seat of the motorbike that you can hook your helmet strap onto. And then when you lock the seat back down, your helmet's protected. Um, in Thailand, we throw them in the basket on the front. We uh, hang it on the handlebar or something like that. We don't worry that much about it. Here, you need to lock that helmet up or take it in with you. Um, and again, it's just because of the poverty. It's, there's more poverty here. There's more opportunity. I told you before, I always say this. If I had to describe uh, uh, people in Southeast Asia, the average person, they're opportunistic. They have to be uh, because of the way their society is set up. They have to look for some way to survive. And um, so they look for any opportunity to be able to make some money. Um, and so if you're the opportunity, then they take advantage of it. So don't become the opportunity. That's uh, the best advice I can give you. Um, so what are we going to do today? I have a few more things I need to show you. Um, I need to go check on, head into the, head into the beach, see what the costs are there, see what it's like. I haven't been there for a while. But uh, that's it for now. See you when I see you. I've talked about some of the improvements uh, since I was here last, and I'll show you one of them. Used to be in downtown, when you went around downtown, there were a lot of broken up, dirt potholed streets filled with uh, dirty water and stuff. So when you walked along or drove a motorbike, it was really difficult. But if you notice now, Going down that road, and this road, it's newly paved. So all those bad roads that were in the capital have now been paved, and uh, it makes getting around much easier, uh, much more sanitary. And uh, so this is one of the big improvements here, the roads inside the city. Now here the ones going to uh, Siam Rep is, uh, are still bad, but hey, this is a big improvement in the city. Okay, a traffic tip for anybody coming to Cambodia. Okay, now, 
It's against the law to ride in the daytime with your headlamp on. Keep that in mind. You'll get a ticket. It's not illegal to drive at nighttime without your light, though. So keep that in mind. Now, notice the, the light here. I've been stopped two times for this. Notice the light's got a green arrow. Notice the camera shaking. I'm camera shaking because I just got through having an altercation with the police here about this issue. Now, notice it's a green arrow. This means you can go straight, you can turn right, you can do whatever you want to do, okay? Now, this light's going to turn red, okay? And watch this, okay? Now, notice you have a red arrow for straight, okay? Which means you cannot go straight. Now, it doesn't say you can't make a right turn, but by the Cambodian law, as soon as that light turns red like this, you cannot make a right turn. Now, they do have lights here that are right arrow, a right arrow that means no right that you have to stop. But if you don't see a green, a green light, don't turn. Don't go, even though everybody else does. Now, the police are set up. They're actually set up across the street and down the street, and they're giving tickets for this. Doesn't matter if you go the wrong way, you don't have helmets, then all that stuff doesn't matter. Okay, you see the police across the street set up here. There's police over there. So, this is the deal. If you see a red light, it doesn't matter if it's a red arrow or not, don't turn. Move over to the side, get out of everybody else's way, and, and, and sit there until the light turns green. I've been stopped twice for this, okay? First time, I just actually told him, and they say my Thai driver's license is no good. So, so on the membership site, I'm going to have to come up with a document written in Cambodian language that says that the Thai license is good here, because I know it is. Um, but uh, the first time, I just went ahead and uh, told him I didn't understand. We argued about the license, and they let me go. This time, this guy was insistent. He wanted money or he wanted to give me a ticket, but he, I think he wanted money because he wasn't writing a ticket. So finally I kept telling him, it's a red arrow straight. I didn't go straight. Now there's somebody who just went through the air. Then these people are going through the red arrow straight. No problem. Notice that. These people are going right through. No problem. Yeah? Okay, but they step, stop me and stop other people. So this is very uncool. But anyway, this time uh, I had to pull out the video camera and said, okay, go ahead, give me a ticket. I'm going to... I'm going to do the video about this because this isn't good for, for tourism. Well, he said, no video. I said, yeah, sure, video. He said, no video. Finally, I said, I'm going to turn on the video. He said, go, leave. <laughs> anyway, well, that's the scoop. Red light, don't move. Hey, JC here. Let's talk about traffic safety. Crossing roads in Phnom Penh. Phnom Penh, you know, you're going to see these little traffic signals, okay? And they're going to be red, and you know what that means, right? Don't cross. Then they're going to change to green. When they change to green, you're going to see this little guy. The little guy's walking. But notice how fast he's walking. This isn't good. What you need to do is you need to pay attention to the next step. He's going to start moving quick. That's my suggestion all the time. Forget that walking slow part. You need to be bolting across these roads, like this little guy is. He's going to start moving fast. There you go. He's going to start moving faster and faster. My suggestion is always move fast when you're crossing these roads. All right? Just a suggestion to keep you safe. Hey. Got a torrential downpour going on outside, so I had to duck into some place, and I was a little bit hungry at the same time, so I ducked into a place across from Sharky's Bar. Now, Sharky's is a famous bar here in the capital, and uh, so it wouldn't be hard to find that. And this is right across the street, and it happens to be a vegetarian restaurant. You can see the decor and everything's very nice. Um, it's not open air. You get to sit down, they bring you some tea. Actually, it's cool tea. I'm not sure what it is, <laughs> but I'm drinking it anyway. Anyway, I ducked in here. If you're a vegetarian, this is a great place. It's called Evergreen Vegetarian House, and it's across from Sharky's Bar, and you could actually come here on a Category 1 budget if you wanted to, and you're a vegetarian. Um, uh, Category 1 rippers make, uh, in case you don't know, and you're new 
to the, the videos here, that means that you're under $500, 500 to 750 uh, US dollars a month that you got to live off of. And I ordered a vegetarian burger for $2.50. Now, the average meal, oh, you can hear the thunder. The average meal in, in the capital is about three, three and a quarter, three fifty. So two fifty is a good deal for, for getting a veggie burger. Uh, looks like it comes with a little bit of lettuce and tomato and stuff. And so I'm going to check this out, stay out of the rain for a few minutes. And uh, but I wanted to pass this on to you in case you're on a, uh, on a budget. Okay? See ya. these kinds of days if you come during rainy season but it's funny this is like going the second time and actually while I've been out it's been raining uh, so uh, there you go it doesn't seem like it bothers them too much actually they look like they're enjoying the rain this kind of stuff, right? And I bet you in about 15 minutes it'll blow over and it'll be fine again. Here comes the Cambodia Express. I guess that's like Federal Express, but Cambodia style. So I'm not even sure if you can hear me with this rain coming down so hard. But uh, there you go, I'm ducked into a restaurant. And I'll have to try this place across the street too. There's a sub and sandwich shop right next door to Sharky's Bar, uh, right across the street. So one day I'll have to check that out as well. Anyway, I'm going to stay dry for a little bit, hang out, eat my veggie burger, and I'll let you know how it is, okay? So here's my veggie burger that came. <clears throat> wow, it's very really good. You can tell it's homemade and it's a beefy size. You can see my hand. I don't know if you can see my hand or not, but anyway, it's beefy. Yeah. Excuse the pun. <laughs> beefy size veggie burger. Anyway, very good, very big. So check it out if you're at Sharky's and you need a little snack. So as you can see, 10 minutes has passed by. It's no longer a torrential downpour. Hey, it's a little heavier than a drizzle, so it's time to get on my way, all right? And now you know I'm gonna be getting hit up for tutu rides and stuff, because they think the foreigner cannot be the kind of person who wants to walk in the rain, that's for sure. So anyway, that's a scoop, and I'm on my way. Hey, JC here. Okay, so you're on a category uh, one budget, and you want to live in Pompeii, Penh, and you don't know uh, what you'd be able to afford. Well, if you look hard enough, you could actually stay in a neighborhood like this, because uh, I got a deal I want to show you. It's a great little neighborhood, and uh, stumbled across some, uh, a really great place for low rent. So check this place out. So we're up on, uh, I don't know, third, fourth floor. We've got a little stairway that comes up and goes into this unit. Now it looks like this unit was originally uh, set up for a different layout, but they've uh, cut it up a little bit. So let's check this out. And then I'll tell you how much it is afterwards. So you close the door here. It's got security, secure, nice security door. So that's a good thing. A little kitchen area here, a bathroom for your guests. So now that's what I'm saying. See, it was split up a little bit different before for some reason. So it uh, has this uh, Cajun stair staircase here, but it's Cajun for privacy and security. And we got a hallway, a nice bedroom here with air conditioning. Cool, huh? Air conditioning, nice bedroom and a bath. Another bathroom here, nice tile bath. And as you go down the hallway, great windows, secure windows, great view, nice breeze. And then we got a little living area kind of place here, you know, hanging out. And a little balcony, nice balcony, 
Very nice, eh? All the way down the side here. And check out the neighborhood. Is this cool or what? Nice new buildings and everything. Very nice. So guess how much this place is in downtown? $200 a month. Can you believe it? Great deal. Great deal. So if you look hard enough, you can find places like this for a really great price. So that's something I want to turn you on to if you wanted to live in the capital of Cambodia. You don't have to pay an arm and a leg. You know, most places you go around, it'll be three, three fifty. But if you look hard enough, you can find a great place like this, all tiled and everything up for two hundred dollars a month. So, if you look hard enough, you can actually stay over here on a, what we consider a category one budget. So, uh, very cool. Now, one thing that's a lot different in Cambodia than in Thailand because of the theft. If you have a, a motorbike and you want to park it someplace, you really need to be careful. And uh, even then there's guards almost everywhere you're going to park. And even the guards will tell you like to pull inside someplace, you know, like if it's in front of a business, you actually pull your bike inside the business. So that sort of scares me that you got to pull it inside. Um, make sure you use an exterior lock to lock the wheel for sure. And more better than not, take your helmet inside with you. Now the thing about it is, it's like there's guards everywhere. And so you're depending on them sort of to watch your stuff. And the thing about it is, though, they're watching your stuff and they're paid, and it's sort of like uh, your, it's suggested that you tip them uh, for watching your bike. I guess if you don't tip them, it might disappear. I don't know. But this adds to the cost. If you have a motorbike and you're parking in some places, you can park and get on the bike afterwards, but they're going to you know, put the kickstand down. They're going to do all these different things, and then when you get the bike, sometimes they'll wipe down the seat. So they're expecting a tip. They're like a valet, sort of, but they're actually a guard. And so uh, this adds to the price, too. I mean, I always feel like I need to give them some kind of tip. So factor that into your budget as well, or uh, just take public transportation. That's something I wanted to mention. Now, if you're hanging out and you're actually living in Thailand or you set up an account, a bank account in Thailand, which is probably a good idea, um, it's easy to do, but you're going to live in Cambodia. My question one before I came over, because you got to have a budget, you got to have money. And in Cambodia, they're using U.S. dollars. They're not using Thai bot. They're not using their money except for change under a dollar. Instead of getting cents like you would with the U.S. dollar, you get riels. So riels is their change for one dollar. And of course, you can have enough of that change and be two or three dollars, five dollars. But anyway, so if you need money, I was thinking, well, hey, if you have an, a Thai bank ATM card, I wonder if it would work over in Cambodia. And so I went online before I came to see if anybody had that information. It wasn't clear whether you could do this or not. First of all, they said there weren't a lot of ATMs, which there are. And the second, can you use a Thai ATM card in an ATM machine in Cambodia? Well, the answer is yes. I put my card in. It read the, the balance inquiry, gave me how much money was there in U.S. dollars, and you can withdraw it. So there you go. If you come on over, you don't have to carry a bunch of cash because that's not safe. Uh, when you need it, um, you can just withdraw it from an ATM. I'm not sure what the fees are going to be to do that, but I just wanted to let you know that it is doable. All right? Later. Hey, JC back for RetireCheap.Asia. Guess what? I've been in Phnom Penh for, gosh, over a week or so. Uh, I want to head to the beach. I miss the water. You know, having been in Cochon, I really enjoyed the beach, as you know. <clears throat> and uh, I hear that you can get a place down there for like a hundred dollars a month. That's amazing. Uh, the water's supposed to be really nice where I'm headed. Um, it's where a lot of foreigners are, are living now. And because it's so easy to get a one-year business visa, a lot of businesses are owned by foreigners or being run by foreigners uh, down there. So I'm real interested in seeing what it's like down there, what the costs are, uh, just the overall ambiance for you all that are considering retirement. And um, Remember, anyone who comes to live in a Cambodia, there's always an option. One thing, just before I head off, I just want to give you a little synopsis about the capital. Um, yeah, I am headed off to the beach. 
Uh, I've been in uh, the capital now for a while, and um, you know, it, if you're retiring and you want to come to uh, Southeast Asia, I would consider Cambodia. It's changing a lot. Um, their people are really friendly um, because so many businesses are owned by foreigners, and foreigners understand the concept of happy hours and uh, discounts and stuff like that. If you look around, you can find deals on food, alcohol, stuff like that. Um, you just got to watch your stuff closer. Um, in the capital, for sure, there's a lot more poverty and, uh, and uh, street kids and stuff like that that you got to keep your eye on your stuff. But as far as personal safety, I've never felt it uh, um, at risk. And um, it's been a good experience here. I'll be back for sure. Uh, but we got to head off to the beach and check that out as well. But uh, as far as uh, infrastructure, the Internet's been really great. Uh, people have been friendly. The deals, I've been able to find deals on uh, rent and stuff like that. So uh, all in all, I'd, I'd rent, rate uh, the capital about a seven and a half. It's not higher than that because of a couple things. One is uh, the theft um, and uh, also the traffic. The traffic is nuts. Driving here is, is a, it'd be a real challenge for most people. It'd really be pushing some buttons. But anyway, I'm sure it's different down at the beach, so uh, we'll get a rental bike down there and uh, check it out as well. So I'll see you at the beach. Hey, I just thought I'd mention a couple things while I'm waiting for my bus to uh, head off to uh, to the beaches. Um, one is, you know, there's a lot of touts. Every time you get up, you move, you walk out of a business or something, you're going to get hit with, you know, do you want a motorbike, you know, moto, which is a motorbike driver, tuk-tuk, which is a tuk-tuk's or DVDs, uh, newspapers, books, what else, tours, you go see the killing fields, go see this, go see that. And you start, it starts to wear on you a little bit, but I'll tell you what, it's a lot better off than it used to be. A lot better off. It used to be really bad. It used to be when you'd sit and eat, there'd be, you know, 20 people lined up across the street waiting for you to get up. And then they'd start screaming and yelling as soon as you got up. And it's not like that anymore. It's a lot better. And it will continue to improve if the government can increase the wages to become more in line with the cost of living, uh, it'll get even better. Um, but now it's, it's something you have to deal with. <clears throat> now the thing about it is you start to get hardened to it or it starts to get irritating and you know I got to step back every once in a while and realize that these people are trying to eke out a life and um, it's not a personal attack against me it's just you know how they're trying to make a living and some people have chosen to uh, deal with the tourism um, and sell and do things in that, in that realm and so those are the people that we come in contact with and I'll give you an example. I'm eating at breakfast, and uh, you know I'm getting hit with DVDs, with books, with newspapers, and I'm just I, after a while you don't even look at them. You just put up your hand. And, no, I don't want any. Well, a guy came up with, with shoe shines. Now I wear sandals, uh, leather sandals, and um, you know with shoe shine. I'm like, no, no, no. So the guy comes up again, and this time I look up at him. And he's got a, a, a ball, a, a spool of twine, and a big needle. And he goes, he bends down and points to these areas on my shoes that are starting to come apart on my sandals. And it was like, yeah, 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 I, I could use a repair before they blow out completely. And, they, you know, I have to call AAA to get me to my hotel or something, you know, the Automobile Association to pick me up and tow me there. You know, or I have to buy a pair of shoes, which would be really hard with my size feet uh, on the fly. So this guy said he would do it. And it was like, yeah, yeah, okay. So, you know, there's going to be times every once in a while when maybe all of a sudden there's a reason why they've come into your life. There might be something in that newspaper heading that you need to address or you need to be aware of. So stay open to it. Don't try and close yourself off too much. You know, I find myself doing that because it's sort of an irritant. And so try and be open and, and be pleasant to the people. I'm trying now to be more pleasant, say, you know, thank you or, or something. Another thing I wanted to mention, you know, it's interesting when you come to this place, Cambodia. Um, you know, it's a poor place, but I got to tell you something. I've never seen more Lexus SUVs in my life in one place. And, and I know Lexus is not giving these away for free. So, I mean, one out of every 10 vehicles almost is a Lexus SUV. So there's some money in this place floating around. 
Now, uh, a lot of it's diplomatic vehicles, um, you know, uh, NGOs. And another thing you mentioned, uh, NGOs do great work. Don't get me wrong. You know, there's some, some uh, organizations out there that are really making a difference. But I got to tell you, as a whole, these people aren't suffering. Uh, when I first started coming over, it was like these people were running around in uh, land cruisers. You know, that was a vehicle of choice and sort of fit the MO, you know. It's like, you know, out back, you know, and it's primitive. The roads were bad, and they needed vehicles like that. Then it went sort of like to Range Rovers. And which is a higher-end vehicle. And uh, now, almost everybody's running around on Lexus SUVs. So, I mean, these people aren't suffering. And I understand it's a business, and, you know, they're able to pull out money for management fees and stuff like that. But I got to tell you, they're not suffering. Uh, and now, there's some of them probably are running on a shoestring budget, and some of them really putting a lot of money towards the, the cause that they're doing. But I got I've never seen this many Lexus in, in my life anywhere in the world like I see running around here. Anyway, just thought I'd point that out. So anyway, oh, the guy's through in my shoes. Wow, very nice. Hey, he fixed them. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, I'll get some glue. I'll put no, some glue. Glue's no good, huh? Yeah, my beef is so good. Same, same, $3? Four dollars. Oh, okay. That might be nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the guy kept saying one more dollar for every almost every every seam, every sewn. Uh, and I kept saying, yeah, 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 the guy's working hard. Uh, thank you. And But uh, now there's like this little tiny thing. He says, you know, and I thought he'd throw it in for the, for the money, and he's not. So he's, he's a business guy. He's a, a real business guy. But he did a great job. My, uh, my shoes are ready for to continue our adventure. Um, so we're good to go. And uh, I'm good to go now. I've got uh, treads on my feet so I can go. So anyway, see you at the beach.